Hello! In this video I'll be adding 3 new characters to the Disney Celebration train set. I already added 4 in the past, but today I'll add more, more princesses, <clears throat> more justice for a forgotten character, and more crazy stunts. Oh. So all aboard the Disney train, which will be revealed soon. Hello everybody, my name is TJ, and you know what time it is. It's Disney Celebration Train time! I've already made two videos on expanding this set, which resulted in a total of four new cards. Links will be down below in the description if you want to check those out. And in this video, I'm aiming to make three more. Last video, I had bought a bunch of Disney 100 blind bags, but that wasn't enough to get the entire set, so naturally, I bought more. Now we've surely got enough. But there's so much choice now. Do I pick this one, or that one, or this one? They all look the same, I don't know which one to choose! So I burdened my sibling with the task of feeling through the bags and giving me three minifigures which he thinks would be a great match for this video. No pressure, brother, but there's a lot of pressure. So let's open blind bag number one. I feel... I feel... I feel something. I don't... It, I think it's a skirt, or it could be the bag from King John, but I don't want King John. Let's see if I remember how to open these. Clearly not, but it is Princess Aurora! Oh, oh, yes, oh, she's my favorite childhood princess. Well, actually that was Snow White, but she's being held from me with a $500 price tag, so whatever. I'm so happy. Let's put her together. Oh, I love her. Look at this beautiful dress she's wearing. Kind of salty, it's pink and not blue like the one she's wearing in the majority of the movie, but I can't be mad at the details and the sparkles on this beautiful pink dress. It even has the corset strings on the back. It looks so gorgeous and her hairpiece is so curly and just perfect. I don't really get her accessory. I mean, why the owl? of all things. Why not the three good fairies or something else? But it's okay, it's okay, because I haven't shown you the best part yet. This minifigure is able to actually prick her finger on a spinning wheel and fall asleep. Her alternate face print is her sleeping, which is so good! I'll be using that for sure and let her all the time. I even like it so much that I think I just want her to be asleep on the celebration train. So I'll make her cart into a straight up bed. I'll first start with a grey base layer as if it were the floor of the castle. I don't just want to place the bed on the floor that's not very princess like. She can't. Here. Don't worry by the way this is not the actual bed. I stole this from a hospital. Hey! So I'll first build a bed frame out of tan bricks and even use the backside of these masonry bricks to add some texture to it. Now for the actual bed I'm gonna make it blue cause that resembles the movie and if Aurora is gonna be pink, the bed's gonna be blue. Make it pink, make it blue. I'll start with this dark azure mattress. Yes, I finally know how to pronounce azure. Thanks for all the comments. And round it off so it really looks bed-like. When looking at the bed in the movie, it kinda has these ruffles on the mattress. And I really like those, so we need them. I'll recreate them by alternating white plates and these teeth pieces. This looks so good. On top of those, I'll put a sheet in a lighter shade of blue and build a pillow using a white plate and a white curved slope. It actually looks like a fancy bed. This works so good. Well, actually it doesn't work at all. I discovered that Aurora can't lie down without breaking her back because of this dress piece. So unless we find some legs for her, she can't actually sleep. Unless... We dig a hole into the bed for her dress to go into. Whoa, this actually works. I... I didn't expect it to, but great. Great! <laughs> okay, now let's focus on the back side. I'll place these two big pillars here and a brown window piece as a backrest. Looks weird from this side, but absolutely gorgeous from this side. On top of the pillars, I'll place this big snot brick on which I'll hang this purple shield piece and these two blue flags. This way they kind of look like those drapes. Only kinda, but it works. Kinda. We need something on top here to really seal the deal. So I'll take some Lego pieces in the same blue as the mattress, including this car piece, which is apparently called a mudguard with headlights. I don't know. To create this little ceiling thingy. It doesn't look quite finished yet though, so I'll take some tiles to kinda hide the weird parts. I just don't have two tiles in the same color blue, but if you look at it from this side, you don't notice it. Okay, you do notice it. But if I crank up the saturation, you still notice it. Okay, just ignore it, okay? <laughs> I don't have that many Lego pieces in my collection, so I've gotta do with what I have. We'll cover it up with this owl, look. Problem solved. Now, before we can lay Aurora to... 
I want to add the three good fairies that have come to cry at Aurora's bed because, you know, they hate themselves because they had one job and failed it so they think that they're nothing more than disappointments because their Aurora is dead now or sleep, or whatever. I found these three studs in red, blue, and green that are the perfect size and colors to represent the three good fairies. So with a little bit of adjusting the back of this build and adding these transparent rods, they can float around Aurora's bed. So now, I think the cart is done. Okay, Aurora, it's go time, girl. It's time to go to bed. She fits perfectly, and look at how nicely the pink contrasts with the blue. I love it, I could stare at this endlessly. But maybe that's a bit creepy, so let's unbox another character to add to the strain. Um, I have no clue which one this could be, it's very unremarkable. So let's open it up. A little lust struggle this time, and it is... A Mulan! Oh, another princess. Hmm... <laughs> I'm smelling a theme here. Wow, she looks so pretty. They really captured her likeness very well. The only thing I don't really like is the hair. I feel like that could have been a bit better, but the rest is so good. Her little ribbon, the emperor's medallion on her neck for saving China, the backs just the back, nothing special. But the lucky cricket as her accessory? Yes. Yes, please. Wait, this this made me realize though Where's Mushu? It would have been perfect to have him here. I would have taken him over this stupid sword in the Lucky Cricket that's very pretty and has a very nice printed brick, but Mushu... You know what? I already know what I'm gonna build for this cart. I want some justice for Mushu. And honestly, it's way better than my first idea. I first wanted to recreate that scene where she's cutting off her hair, but every time she sees herself in the mirror, she... Does that, so let's keep her away from mirrors. Okay, so I'm thinking making Mushu giant. Like the ancestors gave him an upgrade and now he's the mighty dragon he always wanted to be. I got inspired by those traditional dragons they use at Chinese festivals and it so happens that there's an actual Lego set made out of these. So I'll be taking some inspiration from this one. And with inspiration I mean I copied almost all the steps for the head. Only the head though and, and I adjusted it slightly so really it's my own build. I know it's not entirely my build but let me talk you through it. I first made this weird bracket contract filled it up. I actually did this with a giant ball brick, put another bracket and lots of modified plates on top of it, added these weird looking glass things, cover it up, put the eyes on these looking glass things, which is actually such a good technique, I will remember this for later, create a mouth like so, yeah, and the top part I actually forgot about the instructions and did something completely else, so screw the steps. I used a modified gold plate first that I connected to this other modified plate with a normal plate. Oh, that was a lot of plates in one sentence. Put some some yellow clips here, top it off with this triangle plate, and last but not least, the nose. I actually had the perfect color of this piece for the nose, but only had one of these, so brown it is. These are the compromises I have to make, you see? To finish it off, I put these gold swirls in the clips and attached it to the rest of the head. It's starting to look alive, but we're missing some Mushu features, like his horns. They should be blue, but I'm gonna give him some black horns, because again, I don't have them in blue. Maybe one day, I don't know. Now the only things we're missing are his floppy ears, which I can actually do. I'll use the same looking glass things and place them right here. Use a plate to cover them up, stick these red fangs to them, and we have ears. Bam. The head really looks like Mushu so far. Now we just need the body. We can't have just the head flopping around, right? I will make the body in all separate parts, connected through these ball connector plates. Cause this way I'll be able to give the body that very slithery movement we're looking for. Like a snake. Cause Mushu is just a snake with legs, let's be honest. First we need to make the front part, on which we can attach the head. So I'll surround this bigger ball receptor with red surrounding the top and sides, and yellow at the bottom. For that cute yellow belly he has. That's a great start. We just just need some arms to make it less awkward. I made the arm by stacking brick on plate on plate on jumper on plate on jumper on modified plates. Are you following? Then I made these modified plates hold two claws sideways and now we've got some nails on this paw making them really scratchy. I'll make another one of these and connect them to the body with this plate and two slopes. Now the tiny body can crawl around. 
maybe that's not ideal, so let's make more body slices. I made them all in different ways, just because I don't have a lot of the same bricks in my small collection, so I needed to improvise with different parts. It's the first time I'm really struggling, I need more bricks desperately. <laughs> maybe that's what I get from running two series at the same time where I just don't destroy the bills afterwards. <laughs> but what I aimed to do was create as round of a body part with the ball connectors in the middle, and made them smaller as I went along. Hey, what's this one doing in here? But please subscribe! So I can buy myself more bricks to make better builds for you guys. The slices look a bit weird on their own, but put together, they form a nice bendy body. All we've gotta do now is add back legs and a tail. The back leg was pretty easy. I used this modified plate, attached these clips onto it, put a pin holder tile into those holes, attached an open black stud and put some claws into it. Kinda reminds me of shrimp legs though, but it's good enough. And as for the tail, I also used the modified plate here and found this weird clippy thing, which will allow me to clip a lot of things to it. Like these feathery pieces, these tooth pieces, just everything with a little bit of flair to create a fun tail with. Now we just attach it to the rest of the body. If voila! Our version of Mushu. It doesn't look all that bad, but I for sure could have made it better with the right parts. Maybe I can update it in the future. He turned out bigger than I thought though. He takes up a lot of space, but I like it. But where do we put Mulan? I didn't think of this. On his head? No. On his back? No. In the middle? Without? Mirror? I mean, that could work, but I need something more here. I bought this amazing mini doll set with Mulan and Jasmine, mostly for this beautiful carpet, Raja, Mulan's horse, and the many other amazing pieces that came with it. But of course, no Mushu. What the hell, Lego? But why I'm bringing up this set is because it also has this tiny Mulan build, which could be useful to us. And look, there's no mirror. Wait, where's mini doll Mulan? No, give that back! I'll just take this top part and these pillars because that would be perfect for this empty spot. I do think I want this to be elevated though, so it isn't quite as low. So I'll put this on a plate, use these black bricks and this red Chinese fence to create a fun foundation for this little arch. It's gorgeous. Just no mirrors! I like this cricket here, but now that I've seen that other set, I think I actually prefer that cricket. So I'm gonna switch these to just shh. Don't tell Lego. Now the final question is, is there any space left for the horse? No, definitely not. So this cart is done. It looks so good. I've really outdone myself, to be honest. Love the Mushu. Hashtag justice for Mushu, you know. I'm gonna admit, it's a bit rough. Don't look at the side with the burnt cheek or the shell tattoo or the backside in general. I swear I'll take care of these and update them when I've got the parts. But it looks so good and I want to add this to the cart. But, but first, we've got to unbox one more minifigure. Will it be another princess? And if so, who will it be? Tiana or Pocahontas? Wait. Is Pocahontas actually a princess? Yeah, yeah, she is. She marries Prince John. Duh. Okay. Let's see who we got. And it actually is Pocahontas. Welcome, princess, that I now know you are. Let's build her. Whoa, her hair. Look at that windswept beauty of a thing. Lego. Great job, best decision. I also really like her outfit. It's really reminiscent of the cartoon. The compass is kind of meh. It's a compass, you know, but I love the fact that they added in these brightly colored leaves so she can paint with all the colors of the wind. No, it is good that they included these, amazing. Okay, so. The cart. The movie is all about nature and listening to nature and loving it. She also jumps off of a waterfall several times and I think I want that. I want her to be diving off a cliff. In water, of course. In a movie, the waterfall isn't just one waterfall, it's this huge one and then several tiny ones. So I'll create something similar here. One baby and one big boy. For the rocks, I'll use a variety of gray and dark gray bricks and slopes to create that rocky texture we're looking for. Of course, we can't forget about the rock she's going to be jumping from. On top of the rocks, I'll use some brown plates to make the top look more natural and dirty. And at the bottom, I'll create this nature scene with dark brown blocks, green plates, leaves, and these new pine trees I just got. Aren't they gorgeous? I actually want more nature along this big gray rock, so I'll dot around these snot bricks on several places. Down here, I'll place some green leaves as if it were some sort of ivy, but I've got some better ideas for the other snot bricks. I want to place these leaves around here as if they were floating down with Pocahontas. So I'll place this one here, 
use these action pose pieces for the other ones and attach the leaves to those to put them more on an angle. This works so well, it really looks so natural. Now all we need is the diving princess. I'll make it look like she's diving by using another one of those action pose pieces. It doesn't really look like she's diving though still. In the movie she has her arms to the side, which we can actually achieve by taking out her arms and using putty to put them like that, but that looks scary to me. So I'll just put them above her head to create a similar effect. It looks so good! You might be wondering where I'll put the compass, but to that I say, screw the compass, it's stupid anyway. So with that, we're finished. We've made three new cards. One of these is not like the others though. But the bed really looks a bit lackluster now, but <laughs> I ain't gonna change it. I love the idea so much. And now we have all the types of people in parades. You know, some people sleep, some stand there and wave, and others are straight up daredevils doing all sorts of stunts and being extra. So this is perfect. Now all we've gotta do is add it to the other cards. I'm so excited for this! I'm having so much trouble fitting this into the frame, oh god. But it looks so good in real life. I don't know if the camera is able to capture that now, so let's get to the close-ups. I welcome you once caverns, the pits of hell. The underside of my desk. One commenter said I should get some rails to put these on, and I did find some in an old train set my brother had, so this hopefully will be easier than the struggle before. Okay, they actually don't fit, so scratch that. They fit on the straight parts perfectly fine, but the ones they have to turn... They just give up and derail. So it was a good idea, but just sad it doesn't work. Sorry commenter, I disappointed you. Here we go! This project is so much fun and the train is getting so long, but I'm not satisfied. I want more! So if you want to stay updated with the other cards I'll be adding in the future, please hit that subscribe button. It'll also help me fund this project because as you saw, I need some more bricks. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments which card you loved most and which card you would love to see happen in the future. Thanks to all the commenters who suggested I made these characters in this video by the way. Y'all have some great ideas, so keep them coming. Also follow me on Instagram for little hints about which characters are gonna be next. Thank you so much for watching. By the way, I almost hit 2k subscribers and wow, that's so crazy to me. Thank you so much, I never expected that to happen. I will hopefully see all near 2000 of you in the next video. Bye! Uh, I'm really so grateful, I love doing this stuff, so thank you for watching.